Dave here, and today we're going to check out the work of Wadim Kashin. He is a concept artist, visual development artist based in St. Petersburg, Russia. Russia. Yeah. <laughs> That's a bad accent. By the way, he does have like a YouTube channel, but he only has one video, so I'll still link it in the description below. Um, but yeah, he's not really a YouTube guy, but he does have a lot of... Um, his portfolio is amazing and he does use 3D although it's something that eventually I might um, delve into in the future but right now I'm just focusing more on my 2D skills just because it's kind of my thing but if you just kind of scroll down through his art, through his art station portfolio you can see the diversity of his concepts right like they're so varied and he has like a lot of images per post, so it actually, you can feel the world um, that he is trying to go for in each of his kind of mini projects. And a lot of his por portfolio stuff is, um, it's mostly personal work, which I find really interesting, right? And it's cool that he does like full scenes, it's not just like a... Like a, like a simple environment design or just a character kind of shot. It's a whole scene. They're more like keyframes actually, right? Um, which I, you know, it's it's more, well not impressive, but it just feels more complete when you have the characters, when you have maybe some creatures, some mechs, and the actual environment as well. Um, and it does help that he does use 3D just because you can have like a lot of shots um, or you can but choose a lot of shots within one environment so there is that advantage right but uh yeah and yeah this is another example of how you can kind of see what he's trying to go for like there's a bit of storytelling in his work i mean obviously there is some design but i feel like a lot of 3d artists are they're really good at kind of reusing certain kind of 3d a assets um I'm, I'm not sure what kit bash means but i think i think it's just um you're you're kind of just reusing a bunch of assets and trying to like you just play around with them in such a way that you kind of create your own thing um and it's such a useful thing when you're doing entire scenes just because it's um y you can fill in a lot of areas you know, a lot of design kind of aspects quickly, you know. Um, and in a way, you're just focusing on the big picture and the assets that you have kind of just uh, fill in the details. Kind of like when you're photo bashing, right? You see the big picture in terms of composition and then you just use some photos to kind of help fill in some textures and details. And, and you just kind of do a paint over. He does paint over sometimes in his 3D work. Um, and you can see this kind of mixed media kind of effect. But again, look at the lighting. Look at the storytelling involved. Um... He used to do only 2D and then I think once he started doing 3D, he just kind of jumped, you know, in terms of his um, abilities when it comes to pumping out concept, right? Now this one's just one piece, but he does post like the crop version. It's kind of like a keyframe cinematic kind of shot. It's a more of a fantasy. Oh, he does uh, uh, mostly sci-fi, but I've seen him do some fantasy stuff as well. Um, and again, the, the variation, the, uh, the diversity of concepts, of themes in his portfolio is just amazing. Um, and I kind of want to do the same thing. <laughs> and I, I always like to, um, it, it's just impressive to see, you know, the amount of work that he does. And his personal work is obviously done on the side, but it looks very, very professional to me, right? Now this one is heavily cropped, this bottom one, right? Very, very uh, longitudinal in nature. Um, now this one's more of a fan- oh, is, is it fantasy? It's kind of sci-fi, just because of the ships and shit, right? Um, so I, I'm guessing he does like a bunch of things. He, he has like a 3D kind of rough, and then he'll do like photo bashing with some solid paint overs, right? Um, and it's actually hard to see his, um, his brush strokes. Like his 2D stuff is not too strong, or it's not visible. Sorry, it's not that it's not strong. He he just kind of he go, he goes for a cleaner kind of a look, I guess. Now this one this this one is pretty cool. You can actually see the the rough ideation of the ship design here, right? 
a lot of pencil sketches. I'm guessing it's pencil sketch. It's some kind of uh, pencil sketch, or maybe it could be like from a 3D program, and then you can kind of add a filter to it, right? Um, but it looks cool. It looks very designy, designy, right? And a lot of environment design. Look at how the lighting is well done, um, right? It looks like it's a shot from a film, right? Now that's pretty cool, right? Like it's an actual keyframe of some kind of um, film, right? 3D does help like save a lot of time, right? And um, if you can couple that with some decent 2D skills, I mean, Christ, right? I'm not sure what program he's using here, so if we can... Well, he doesn't mention it, but, uh, you know. Awesome, right? Damn! And he usually posts like a bunch of, they're, they're like a sequence of shots. It's not like, um, it's really less about the design. It's more about the, uh, the storytelling, right? Narrative art. Um, so in a way, he's like Alexander, uh, Alexander Mandrajev, where they both focus on keyframes. Although Alexander Mandrajev, um, he's more of a 2D guy. Um, oh, by the way, he did post like a recent video. Um, as of this recording, at least, of, um, like, he did a talk on how to become a keyframe, um, illustrator, so, anyway, side note, um, this one's more of a, shit, what is this? Oh, it's an artwork for Ophelia Records, and oh, that's pretty cool. It's kind of like Jordan Grimmer, because Jordan Grimmer, I think he also does, like, cover art, or for a certain kind of... Um, albums. One day, maybe I'll be that guy, but, uh, fuck. Again, more sequ- oh, it's, it's not a sequence shot. I mean, it's still a keyframe, like, it's an action kind of thing, but, yeah. Reminds me a bit of Clone Wars, when they were, like, flying and shit, where, where they were trying to save, I think, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Pretty cool. Oh, this one is probably a fantasy. It is, right? Oh, you can actually see a bit of 2D here, right? So he's, he's, he's using a bunch of things, like 2D um, photos, some 3D assets, and a bit of paint overs in the end to kind of tie things together. But the lighting is almost always correct, in a way, like it feels right. Um, or is, is it right the word? It feels, it feels complete, right? Mm, photos, right? Photos. Photo textures. And it's so well blended. They're almost like matte paintings. Like, it's a matte painting kind of level. Because matte painters, if, if ever you kind of check out their portfolios, it's super kind of high quality. Like, it, it it would really go well. Obviously, it's, you know, necessary for them to kind of reach that certain kind of quality. But, like, it could totally be a background for a film, you know? And it takes a lot of effort, I guess. A lot of skill. Um, and composition-wise, he knows how to kind of frame the shots. Obviously, it helps with the 3D, but... You know, using 3D isn't like a like the only thing that matters, you know? Because you have to kind of frame the shot anyway, whenever you have to post the uh, um, a 2D version or the, the 2D shot. And even when you're making, if you're kind of making a film, obviously it's going to be in 2D, so you have to know how to frame things. So a bit of composition skills or having some skills or knowledge in terms of composition helps, you know? And because when you're doing 3D, there's so many, you have the ability to have like a lot of shots. And if you're not aware of certain compositional um, um, points, <laughs> you're going to waste time and you're going to put out really bad looking shots. Even if it's like a good rendering, it's going to look bad just because the shot doesn't look right or it doesn't say, it doesn't tell the right story, right? And I like how he posts like different versions of of like the same shot in terms of like the cropping of it because it does have a different effect, right? And um, it can't even change the story a bit if it's kind of cropped a certain way. Like look at how this whole thing is spaced, this whole background thing, this whole ship thing, and then even this tree is kind of separated by the background, right? So there's this kind of 
a separation of certain kind of shapes. If you kind of break this whole composition down to like two to like just basic graphical shapes, there's kind of a nice breakdown of it, kind of a sequential breakdown, right? Ooh! Oh, this shot here reminds me a bit of Feng Zhu. Because Feng Zhu likes uh he whenever he does his ship designs, they kind of look like this. Where there's usually some kind of dome, right? For those of you who know uh Feng Zhu, um I think you know what I mean, right? So many light sources for this one. It's kind of like cyberpunk-ish. It feels like it belongs in the world of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, you know? Um, God. But look at this. these images. There's hardly any 2D. This shot here, I think, is my favorite one. Looks awesome. This could be like the cover or the thumbnail for this um, video, maybe. Who knows? Again, nice shot here. Maybe a bit of 2D paint overs, but very, very light, right? You can see here, it's kind of painted over. Um, but obviously, he has to start with some kind of 3D base. Um, and again, the lighting is pretty legit. Like, it makes sense at all. So this one's the uh, the cinematic kind of version. And this one's more of a 16 by 9, right? I think. And look at how all of his images are kind of under one major hue. Like for these uh, uh, these shots, it's all under green, you know. Like that's the major or the main color, right? Now this one does look a bit more mixed media. You can see like the paint overs, the rough paint overs, very very um, solid. Um, some photo bashing you can see, and um, there's a nice kind of leveling to his work. So you have to be good uh, uh, in. In your post-processing kind of work, well, not post-processing, but you, you need to learn how to use the adjustment layers pretty well to be able to achieve this kind of natural look, right? Especially if it's going to be realistic, you need to learn how to achieve these sorts of subtle value variations, right? And I actually recommend you check out some architectural visualization post-processing videos, like tutorials, just because they kind of have the same process as matte painters, you know? So just a tip right now here you can actually see more of the brushwork in some parts right and you can see him use some photos here to save some time so he's kind of um he's not afraid to use like a variation of techniques right and this gives him the leeway to just he's more flexible I guess and it's such a interesting and very attractive skill set to have as a concept artist because look at how much he can do when he uses all of his skills together 3d 2d composition right being more of the the art director right or a storyboard kind of artist like he has like everything basically um so that's pretty cool uh personal stuff right so it's just one shot cyberpunk ish uh, oh shit, there are people in the background being, um, dead? Uh, nice babe. Nice dogs. Krrr. Ugh, awesome ship design here. Very, very unique. And, um, yeah. Again, it's just one environment done in 3D and then he just kind of changed the, the shot. Um, by kind of just including different shots of the same kind of environment, you're kind of already telling some kind of story, right? Um, obviously, it has to be done right, but... Christ. Oh, you can see him use some brush strokes here. Even here, it gets kind of abstract-ish. So he has like a base, 3D base, 3D rough base, and then he'll do some basic paint overs, right? Um, but look at how clean... Not, not, not clean, but... Um, how realistic looking it still kind of looks. <laughs> like, it's not super stylized, you know? Even if you can see the, the roughness in some parts, it still has a realistic realistic kind of a, a look to it. An example of his kind of rough, uh, oh, rough clay render. And then he'll do a paint over or he'll bring it in Photoshop and then he'll just um, make it work, right? You can see him kind of paint over in some parts. Uh, and uh, yeah, it saves a lot of time and... 
it looks cool too. <laughs> One day. I actually did download Blender, the, the, the latest version. Um, it's free, so it's cool, but I can't use it just because my laptop can take it, you know. Um, I mean, I have a PC, but it's kind of broken in a way. Um, so I have to repair it one day. Uh, I mean, maybe this is actually a good thing, you know. Um, so it kind of forces me to focus more on 2D instead of uh, 3D, right? So maybe this is a way for me to prepare myself for the future. Um, so I'm just rationalizing my current state. But anyway, awesome concept. It's a bug insect with its kind of rider, right? And look at how the composition works well here, right? Big shapes. It's mostly about the shape design. A lot of environment design is really just about the shapes, you know? I mean, everything else really is about the shapes mo mostly, but especially for environment design, um, you don't need much. And this one's more of a, it's a single shot um, with a cropped version. And you can actually see more of the uh, the paint over strokes, and he did add a bit of noise in the end. Um, it's kind of like a film grain, film grain kind of effect, right? So something is kind of leaving here. This could be it's more of like a sci-fi fantasy. <laughs> it kind of has the Final Fantasy kind of vibe here. Um, um for this one, it's um, it feels more two D. Then I'm pretty sure. I mean, I'm guessing maybe he did some 3D. Or shit, maybe not. Um, I feel like he just painted these or this one, and then he kind of created a cropped version of it, right? Um, and you can see more of the brush strokes, right? Very, very insecty um, vibes. Again, reminds me a bit of the one of the ship designs of Sparth, the one with the um, the wings with the insect kind of wings, right? And in this kind of frame, um, the background is actually left as a graphical kind of uh, composition, right? Um, but I think maybe a bit of 3D, who knows? Um, but it could be just 2D, right? It's not super, it's not even that tight of a design, but uh, it has a bit of a Derek Zabrocki kind of feel to it. I don't know, maybe it's because of the. It's actually hard to say. Um, looks awesome. And yeah, look at how it's not even that complete, but it looks amazing. Well, not amazing, that's kind of a big word, but uh, it looks interesting enough to kind of um, make you imagine shit with it, right? If you can make someone imagine stuff and kind of daydream, I think you are awesome. This one reminds me, it's mostly painted, as you can see, a bit of photo bashing here, right? Mostly painted, reminds me a bit of a Li Xingyin. Um, he has kind of the same style, and color-wise, he does have like natural tones, so I know Li Xingyin likes to use the same kind of natural brownish kind of a use in his work, um, right? A lot of flat brush use here, um, some kind of photo texture in the background, very awesome kind of um, light kind of uh, streaks here, and again, it's more of a keyframe, right? And now this is more of a close-up of this kind of um, character here, right? Look at how it's not even that clean, but kind of works. Uh, it reminds me a bit of a Yi Liu or a Yi Lu, Y I space L I U. I did it. I did an art review of his work as well, and it's kind of like a, a mix between paint overs and photo bashing. That's kind of it's not super refined, but it gets the job kind of done, you know. Like it's meant to be fast and um, and look good, you know, it's meant to be visually appealing and fast at the same time, right? And if you have like a portfolio of these sorts of, or in this kind of, if you have a portfolio that's kind of in this caliber, um, you're kind of communicating the idea that you can come up with a lot of concepts quickly um, and that actually look kind of interesting, right? Um, like if you have like a bunch of these, people are going to expect the same kind of level. So they're going to expect that it won't be super tight, like rendered, and there's going to be some paint overs in it, but the story, the concept is going to be there. 
And again, what's what impresses me about Wadim, Wadim, fuck, Wadim Kashin is the amount of concepts, the amount of ideas that he can produce, right? And they're all pretty interesting, you know? And even the shots themselves, they're not like, um, they're pretty dynamic shots. Again, the 3D helps, but you have to also pick the right shot. So he's not exactly like an amateur when it comes to um, composition, right? Some maintenance here of a ship. Some kind of a. It's more about the character for this one. Um, but again, it does have like some environment stuff in it to kind of give it some context. And it does have. Again, he posts full images. You know, it has the environment, it has the character. It's um, it's like a, an actual keyframe of some kind of storyline, right? And it's not just a simple background. I mean, he does have like this one, right? But it's not too common. Um, if you wanted to just focus on like ship designs, you could like save time by just making everything kind of graphical. But um, he usually do goes for a more complete scene, right? I mean, even for this one, it, it kind of has some context even in the background, right? Now this one is kind of in the forest, right? Two androids with a bow or with bows. Um, awesome. Hmm, he went for a one by one shot here, right? Square, square frame, and then he had like a cinematic shot here. Interesting. This was this one is more cyberpunk, has a bit of snow or dust in the environment, but uh, I like I like this thing here with the brush strokes, right? Um, it's a nice balance between 2D and 3D, right? Because sometimes if it's too like rendered, it can appear kind of boring for me. Um, like it doesn't become art anymore. Ooh, that's so like mean, but sometimes it can kind of like the artistry can die if it's too rendered, you know? I mean, even if it's, uh, I find even clay models more appealing than, uh, like, 3D clay models more appealing than fully rendered types of stuff. Just because I can feel more of the artist in, like, the clay model version of maybe something that's done in ZBrush or something, you know? Um, pretty weird, but, um, some kind of dystopian, well, not dystopian, but apocalyptic. Like nature has taken over, right? Again, nice mix of, I'm guessing, 3D, 2D, and some photo bashing, right? And again, the storytelling is there, right? Particles. <laughs> it's so common to include particles in rays of light. Um, uh, it's more, a bit more brush variety in this one just because of the foliage, right? It kind of makes sense to make it a bit more rough looking. Photo, photo, photo bashing, right? But guess what? The composition is still there, limited by this kind of a uh, cinematic kind of frame. Uh, this one actually reminds me a bit of a uh, John Park in terms of the concept. Uh, John Park has this one piece. Um, it's, he did a he, he did some work for the Mandalorian, and this scene kind of reminds me of that piece of John Park's uh, thing, right? Sci-fi environment. This one is mostly painted, so that's pretty cool, right? So he can actually paint, um, and there's a lot of variety in it, right? It's a bit more, it's less opacity driven, where you kind of do it stroke by stroke, where you can see like. Uh, this kind of uh, build-up of different brush strokes. Um, this one is more kind of opaque, right? Where it's more solid looking, even if there's like a lot of brush use, a lot of brush variety, uh, a lot of textures, it still feels kind of solid looking. I think Derek Zabrocki, you know, is kind of my go-to opaque painter. Um, right? Awesome. Now, the photo bashing for this character is kind of off for me, <laughs> um, but composition-wise, it's awesome, right? Great use of photo textures here, and uh, in his earlier works, he actually likes to use the, I'm guessing, the smudge tool in a lot of his works. I'm guessing it does it after, and it does have like a nice look to it. Um, right? 
when it comes to stuff like this, I think it's better to just paint over these photos to kind of make it look less like photo bashed in, right? But the scene itself looks awesome. Um, Cyberpunk-ish, right? A desert scene with some racing pods, right? Um, I'm guessing some photo textures. Maybe he did like an initial paint over or initial kind of a compositional painting and then he added the photos after. Um, and this is the kind of look that I'm, I'm generally okay with. Um, if it's too photo bashed, I'm kind of... I mean, I could do it. I've done a few, but uh, I have it's to do it kind of constantly. It just takes too much time, you know. And look at how he didn't even photo bash or photo textured all of it. Just this part, a bit of this part and this part, you know. So he just focused on certain areas to kind of paint or kind of texturize. Is that a word? Texturize. And then that's pretty much it, right? Amazing. This one is a few of his weekend sketches done four years ago. Um, so yeah, he can still paint. So even the composition still looks pretty cool at this kind of level, right? Uh, more brush variety. It's obviously mostly uh, photo bashing and some 2D painting. Um, kind of like Craig Mullins, but again, he, uh, Wadim is more opaque in a way. More textures, more solid like brushwork instead of like a... Uh, I don't see a lot of like circle or round brush use, so it's going to appear more solid, um, generally speaking. Same thing for this one, right? I think Dark Zibrock did this, uh, he did a couple of, uh, designs for some kind of architectural, or was it a gym or something? Uh, and it had this kind of similar vibe. It's still very opaque, right? Very solid, not a lot of, like, circle brush use. Look at even this part right here. It's very, like, the paint is solid, you know, it's not like a see-through thing. Um, it's not like a John Wall and the Bird. I mean, eventually it could look opaque, it will look opaque, but... Um, because John, Liberto, likes to use like the round brush as well, the default Photoshop one, right? Um, but I do like this look. Um, I'm still trying to find my style, by the way, so I I kind of keep going back and forth between different artists. Um, but uh, awesome, 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 right? Ooh, I love this one. Very, very impressionistic, right? Um, it's more chaotic, but I, I actually like it. Like, this appeals to my eyes. Like, I actually kind of... Like, I, I visually am aroused uh, by stuff like this, just because it looks sexy, right? Fuck me. And again, it, it feels so raw, you know? Pure. Okay, more um, personal work. A lot of his, again, his portfolio is just a bunch of personal work. I'm not even sure what he does for, like, uh... Like his main job, <laughs> but I'm ex I'm expecting he does like a similar a similar kind of a uh, thing, right? <sighs> Amazing storytelling, storytelling. Kind of this one reminds me of the work of Thomas something. Oh shit, I can't remember his name. He does like a lot of mechs as well in like um, drab kind of old cities. Shit, what's his name? Thomas something. Awesome. Um, mostly 2D painted. I'm guessing he did use a couple of grass brushes here at right, the same time. And he likes to use a smudge to kind of drag paint up and down in a vertical kind of manner, right? Um, looks majestic though. <laughs> I like it. And it's more him. Well, he, he does have like a lot of different styles, I guess. He has this kind of thing, where it's um, uh, 3D, 2D, it's kind of like a mix of everything. And then he has, this one is more kind of opaque, and then he has the more photo bash me messy types, right? Like this one, this one, and this one. Now this one is actually one of his earlier works, so one of his first... This, was, this one was posted six years ago, and if you check out the video of Wadim, Wadim 
Kashin on his YouTube channel. Um, it was done, I think, back in, or he only has one video done in 2014. And you can see the kind of, it's not as good compared to his work now, I'll say that. So you can see that kind of development, that kind of big development that kind of happened in between that time and this time, right? So, so that's it for this art review of Wadim Kashin. I do recommend you follow him on his art station and, you know, and he doesn't post much on his YouTube channel, but, you know, you could follow him there. I'll still link the link in the, the description below. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Keep drawing, keep painting, and stay free.